welcome to Space here from Moscow. We're in the heart of the Russian capital in order to celebrate 60 years since Sputnik, the first satellite in space. We've been marking that anniversary all year in our mini-series Legends of Space. And this month we're dedicating the entire show to the tiny satellite that changed the world forever. It all began here. We're entering the private museum of RSC Energia, the Russian state company that actually built the world's first satellite, officially called Sputnik 1. In this Moscow treasure trove of pioneering space probes hangs one of the original Sputnik flight spares, built in 1957. Our guide is cosmonaut Alexander Kaleri. He remembers how the first satellite was designed to be simple yet effective. It was suggested after the first successful launches of the R-7 rocket to launch the simplest possible Sputnik, which meant that it was not supposed to have any scientific equipment, it just had batteries, a thermal regulation system and a transmission module. Sputnik launched on the 4th of October 1957 and began orbiting the world every 98 minutes. Simple and effective, it broadcast a unique signal from Russia to the world. I believe it was really important and emotionally important for all the Soviet people, as it was a serious breakthrough, the proof of technological progress and the proof of the success of those programs that were underway headed by Sergei Korolev and other scientists. Altogether, they managed to create a space industry which is a world leader in many fields. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Sixty years ago, the news spread at rocket speed. Number one, the booster in the class of an intercontinental missile. You are hearing the actual signals transmitted by the Earth-circling satellite. One of the great scientific feats of the age. This was a major event. It was the start of the conquest of space by the Soviets, which nobody was expecting. We were expecting it to be the Americans, of course, who did come along later. But it was a major panic in the capitals of the West, knowing that the Russians, the Soviets, were capable of doing such a thing. 500 miles up, the artificial moon is boosted to a speed counterbalancing the pull of gravity and released. But Sputnik was incredibly important because it launched the space race with the United States, between the United States and the Soviet Union. And people often misunderstand its importance. They think it's because it was a satellite. But the key threat from Sputnik was, of course, the missile that put it into space. It was an intercontinental ballistic missile that the Soviet Union had developed. They tested it just the month before for the first time. And for the very first time in its recent history, the United States felt threatened. With the space race started, Sergei Korolev and his engineers moved quickly. Less than one month after Sputnik 1, they launched Sputnik 2 with the dog Laika on board. She became the first living being in space, although she died from overheating early in her flight. Veterans of the period recall a time of great ambition. Sergei Pavlovich Korolev put the task of creating Sergei Pavlovich Korolev set the task of creating a manned spacecraft with the Vostok rocket, which was used to launch the first Sputnik. They issued a study on the recruitment of spacecraft crew from the people working as fighter jet test pilots. In 1959, we were already in the first group for testing. The government issued the program of the future exploration of space. 
In this paper, they mentioned automatic stations flying to the moon and flights to Mars and Venus. They mentioned the flight of human beings into space. They spoke about man stepping on Mars, Venus and the moon and building their stations there. I draw your attention to the fact that this was in December 1959. So began a long list of Russian firsts. The first man in space, the first woman in space, the first spacewalk, the first spacecraft on the moon, the first spacecraft on Venus, and the first soft landing on Mars. However, with the American moon landings in 1969, the space race that Sputnik began drew to a close. So what now? On this 60th anniversary of Sputnik, what do Russians today know of its legend? We asked visitors to Moscow's Museum of Cosmonautics. The first Sputnik was launched in 1957 by the Soviet Union. That's the only thing I know. The whole country put in lots of effort in order to achieve this victory, and this victory was very important for the history of the world. I studied it at school, now I brought my kids here to show them, basically, we're opening to them those pages of history that they should know. That our country was the first one, and stands at the root of the exploration of space. Turbo pumps at flight speed and lift off. That legacy lives on. Every astronaut bound for the ISS blasts off from the same Baikonur Cosmodrome as Sputnik. And Russian space agency Roscosmos has many new projects, including the Federation Deep Space Capsule and the new Vostochny launch pad in eastern Russia. Today, it's all about cooperation with ESA and NASA rather than competition. I believe now it's not that important in which field we're first. What matters is what we are aiming to do with our partners. I mean those really important breakthrough missions. Among them is ExoMars, the second stage of which we're going to launch in 2020. And now we're in a phase of active preparation. I also mean exploration of the moon, which will bring us closer to the exploration of the lunar environment and to establishing a station which can be visited and lived in there. Such missions to the moon and Mars would surely have pleased the engineers and scientists behind Sputnik, whose vision, energy and ambition still resonates 60 years later. That's all we've got time for in this program, but you can watch other episodes of Legends of Space and keep up to date with other news from the universe on our website on euronews.com.